And so it's really been a humbling and awe-inspiring journey to see what happens when the communication network of nature is put in contact with human cells. And this has never been seen before in laboratories because in every single Petri dish ever studying cancer, autoimmune disease, vascular disease, whatever model, every single one of those was done in a sterile Petri dish. And so we only understand human biology in a complete disconnect from nature. And therefore we don't believe in healing. Therefore we don't believe in miraculous you know, recovery because we've never seen it before because we were studying human cells in isolation. And so our very scientific model towards which we try to understand human health is so fundamentally flawed in our current understanding of how biology happens that every conclusion that's ever been made in a peer reviewed you know, journal article is a half truth at best. And so we have to remember that we have, we have misunderstood the human life potential because we believed it to be an isolated event. It, as we reconnect humans to this communication network of nature, the very first thing that happens is that the cells, you know, getting the wireless communication network immediately hardwire with fiber optic cables called gap junctions. And thousands of these little cables go from cell to cell. And these, this whole gap junction that may contain a thousand little tiny hollow cables within it is, you know, a hundred times smaller than a human hair. And so it's this tiny, tiny bundle of cables. But at the end of every single one of those hollow tubes that's now a thousand times you know, smaller than a human hair, there's a perfect light aperture that can open and close, letting more or less light from one cell to the next. And so what you just said was you saw one person sharing light with another. That's literally what happens at the cellular level is as soon as there's communication, they immediately set up fiber optic cables to share light between cells. And there's something really beautiful at that microscopic level to understand that the microbiome allowed for multicellular life to occur through its capacity to connect cells by wireless communication that then inspires a hardwired sharing of light. And for that light transfer, we managed to make the first nematodes and earthworms and humans, you know, uh, because of our capacity to share light. And so wow. your, your community connection is basically the macro expression of how biology occurs. It's amazing. You know, I wasn't thinking that I would ask you about this, but it, it actually brings up one of the most amazing things that I've ever heard of that happens. And I'm sure you know about it because you're doing that level, but, but quorum sensing, mm -hmm. the ways that like you have sort of leaderless, um, leaderless decision-making from groups of people who are connected. And in this case, groups of cells who are connected, and, and when I when I heard about that, it really started to get me thinking about things like consensus and um, ways in which, um, you know, humans might evolve to have systems where there didn't have to be an autocratic ruler to decide things for us and, and groups could harmonize together to make decisions that were best for all of them and, and act in unison. What, what uh, have you found quorum sensing to be as interesting and inspiring as I have? Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. I think it's become a real passion, actually. And so at the at the single cell level, you know, well, we'll give it at the Petri dish level, at least the Petri dish level. When you get enough biodiversity into a space, uh, you suddenly see hyperintelligence occur. And this hyperintelligence is expressing something greater than any you know, part could be, and it's, it seems to be even greater than the sum of the parts. So there's some sort of exponential synergistic quality to the intelligence of ecosystems connected and so that connected ecosystem of humanity has an opportunity to express something much greater than we can as individuals and we experience this this is why we in fact you know are, are drawn to spiritual you know practices religious constructs all of that ring true for us because we see and feel in those spaces something greater than the individual and so we are connected to something greater when we go into these social constructs. And so this is something that's inherent in our own experience and our own knowledge base over 200,000 years of human history. We are expressing this deep thing of, of quorum sensing all the time. And the more uh, you know, people you get thinking one thing, even if they're not aware of each other, that, that knowledge becomes universally uh, available. 
and they've done some neat studies. It was just with a colleague who did a bunch of these studies in London um, where they took college students in Oxford and basically broke them into teams of, I think it was 45 students in each room and put them, you know, a, a mile apart on this campus, uh, this greater campus or something like this. And, and they would do three groups and they would start them in sequence. So they, the first group would start a crossword puzzle and solve for it. And they would time that. And as within five minutes of them solving the, the puzzle, they would start the next group. Um, and so they would do this. And every single time they did this, you know, solving the same cross puzzle in each group, the crossword word puzzle was solved faster and faster by each subsequent group meaning that the experience of the individuals, 45 students having the experience of solving something immediately put that information into the field so that it could be accessed faster by the next group and then faster by the next group. So that's at the intellect level showing quorum sensing. At the physical level, I'm very compelled that this can happen as well. And there's great evidence that this is the case. A, a great example of it, I think, is the, the four minute mile. It was thought to be impossible to run faster than four minute mile in, in human biology. And that threshold was respected for hundreds of years of people trying to run that, that break that record. And then suddenly, just a couple of years ago, somebody ran a 359. And within six weeks, two others had run 357 and 356. And so it's like they had broken some sort of physiologic threshold and the information needed at the cellular level to coordinate that much energy and this much you know focused expression of, of locomotion was suddenly available to the population in a new way and so we quorum sense at the physical level at the intellectual level and if you've ever had you know a spiritual moment with a group of people in, in ceremony you've certainly had that so the body mind spirit can all express quorum sensing in it. And uh, for this, we've just launched a new uh, nonprofit called the Institute of Natural Law and Governance, because we believe that we can start to do quorum sensing, like you said, at the government level, where we could start to all practice natural law that's been proven out for thousands of years to be the most stable form of, of sociopolitical you know, management, sociopolitical leadership. So we can reteach this, relearn this natural law system, but in this new system where we start to appreciate quorum sensing, if we start allowing groups to access information within this Institute of Natural Law environment where they're given a resource pool of, of a cohesive philosophy by which they can go and apply it to their local governance structure, to their local, local social movement that might be you know, trying to resolve uh, gender abuse in, in you know third world countries with with the patriarchy so intensely abusive in many of these spaces in the United States we still suffer from an unbelievable amount of domestic violence and, and gender abuse and so there's there's an opportunity for that social change to also take take on natural law as a resonance structure rather than just activism and anti you know violence or anti male or whatever it is instead understand the vibration of natural law and let that create the new fabric for for this resonance state of, of quorum sensing at the sociopolitical level so institute of natural law and governance